Hello everyone, this is a question someone asked on one of the videos I did on climate and seasons of Ghana. You can check that video up. Now the person wanted to know why the southwestern equatorial climate is influenced by the warm Guinea current. These are terms that have been used in the discussion of climate and weather. We need to understand or take them one by one. I decided to respond to this by making this video so the person can get to understand or some of you who don't get this concept will get to understand it better. So when you look at the terms, we have climate. We know climate is the average weather condition. And the climate of the place or the climatic condition of the place can be detected within 30 to 35 years. So it doesn't take a day to know what is actually going on. It takes several readings and measurements and they determine how the external factors or factors are influencing the various climatic conditions. In case you are not aware of the factors that influence climate, when you look at the top five factors, you have the altitude. So altitude is how high the place is above sea level. So when a place is located above sea level, it can be its location or its position on a high land or above sea level can influence its climate. You look at how distant the place is from the sea also. Then, or that's continentally. Then you also look at the distance of the place from the equator. So places close to the equator actually experience this. And that will be my center of focus because of what the person asked over here. So there are other factors. Soil and vegetation can also influence the climate of an area. So let's get into the details and you see how the step-by-step -step approach I'm going to use here will help you understand the thing better. Now the person mentioned southwestern equatorial climate. Now when you look at the southwestern equatorial climate, it's one of the climatic regions in Ghana. Ghana actually has four major climatic regions. So we have the dry equatorial, we have the southwestern equatorial that the person mentioned, then we also have the tropical continental, tropical interior, then the semi-wet equatorial. So those are the other ones or the other three you can add. Now the southwestern equatorial, you look at areas like Axim, areas around Ghana's coast at the border. So you see that it's closer or shares borders with the coast and that is the Gulf of Guinea, the Atlantic Ocean. So the Gulf of Guinea and the Atlantic Ocean so has a massive ocean or huge wind that blow. So ocean current is just talking about large volumes of water that are actually moving continuously and they are hitting the coast gradually. So as the waves move like that, there are strong winds that are pushing the water and they always splash. As the water body also moves, don't forget the wind is also very moisturous. Why? Because there is water content there and as the wind sweeps the surface of the water, the moisture is also getting into the atmosphere. It is that moisture that will get into the atmosphere and form, gradually form clouds and fall back as rain. So you notice that the southwestern part of that coast of Ghana actually experiences a large amount of rainfall, which we know as the double maximum of rainfall, the main rainfall season, the major rainy season and the minor rainy season. Now, how come is the warm guinea? The warm guinea is actually talking about the wind or the current under or that flows in that particular Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Guinea. Ghana is located in the tropics and is closer to the equator. So ocean currents that actually occur or flow in that part of the equator or in that part of the world around that center are actually approaching or hitting the coast and they are warm because the tropic zone receives a lot of sun's heat because of its position. As the moisture wind gets lifted into the atmosphere and it meets also the warm wind due to how, due to the position of the place being located in the tropics, they get mixed up and then you start seeing the clash of the warm wind and the cold wind, then leading to what we call the cyclonic rainfall, as you have learned in science. So cyclonic rainfall has to do with two air masses clashing and when they meet at the cyclone, it generates rainfall or influences rainfall. You can also have the convectional rainfall. So if it is not occurring as cyclonic rainfall, a convectional rainfall where you have the water vapor getting into the atmosphere because of the large volume of the ocean and that is triggering or causing a lot of condensed clouds to fall as heavy rains in that part of Ghana. So Axim is noted to record yearly the highest amount of rainfall in Ghana. So that particular area is where you have the southwestern equatorial climate. So by way of summary, you know it is ocean current and large volumes of water flowing towards and hitting the coast or getting closer to the equator 
will usually be warm because the equator is in the tropics. And when these currents flow and they become warm, strong winds are triggering them or moving them or pushing them towards the coast or towards the equator. As they become warm gradually, they generate that vapor getting into the atmosphere and fall back as rain. So one thing we must know is that the wind is a factor. Then we also have the density of the water. Then factors like the salinity of the water, salt content of the water can also determine how the ocean current move or flow. In this movement of ocean currents, the rotation of the earth has to be included, a major factor that is also causing the movement of the large volumes of water towards places. So basically, this is what is happening along the coast of Ghana, and that is what is influencing the south western equatorial climate. So you get it now. If you have any other question, you can post it under this video or something related to geography or history or anything. Let's see how we can address it. And I'll get back to you. If this is the first time you are coming across any of my videos, I would like you to subscribe, put your comment there, or give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I believe that the viewer is satisfied with this response. I'll come your way again with other interesting breakdown or explanation. Thank you for watching GCL Tutorials. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.